Hi, I'm Mary Greendale, and this is a special edition of Just Thinking. What I'm trying to do with this conversation we're going to have is to discuss an article that is going to be on the town meeting warrant. Now, the town meeting is May 6th, so there's not a lot of time. And I thought that there was a lot of confusion and misunderstanding and misinformation flying around town. So I thought, let's get the people who were involved to come and talk to us about it. The article is going to ask for a uh, position, a new position as facilities manager. And I have with me Selectman Mark Aronian and Finance Committee member Ben Sparrow. And Board of Selectmen is the board that has a, is asking for this, has proposed this position. And the Finance Committee is not recommending the position at this time. And so this will be a good opportunity for us to find out what the pros and cons are. So, hi guys, good for you. Thank you very much, because this was very, very short notice, I know. Um, but at any rate, I'm glad it could work out. And Mark, since uh, you've really been kind of the spearhead on, on this article uh, right from the beginning. So would you please explain to us what is this position? Absolutely. And um, <clears throat> I think with, with any new position um, in, in our town, it, it can be a, a cause of confusion. <laughs> um, and I want to thank Ben uh, from the Finance Committee for, for uh, joining me tonight and trying to clear some of this up. Um, Basically, um, what the selectmen have found over the years, <clears throat> and it, it um, has been a problem that has grown as the town has purchased and acquired more buildings. Um, we're actually around 70,000 square feet now of, of buildings other than schools um, that the town is responsible for. And it's, uh, it's, it's our biggest assets. Uh, or certainly some of them. And um, what we have found is that um, there are numerous projects that go on constantly for the town. Uh, for instance, we have about six of them right now going on, uh, one of them being at the library, uh, a major construction project there, another one at uh, the senior center, another one at Pinecrest, and then the list goes on. And what happens is, is the department head of that department um, ends up be, being the manager of the project. Um, and they're certainly not, really not their forte. Um, our library director right now, Leslie McDonald, is uh, trying to do her normal job as director of the library. And she's got uh, construction going on that she is trying to oversee the best of her ability. Um, it also drags in our town administrator, Jeff Ritter, who also isn't qualified to be a facilities manager, and he ends up having to spend a lot of time driving all around town to stay on top of these projects. Um, it, it is a waste of, 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 um, of, of an expensive employee, our town administrator, to, to run around and play facilities uh, director or manager. Numerous towns have one. Um, it's nothing new. And we've, we feel that it will actually pay for itself because um, we'll have someone that is qualified and with the job description it lists the education, background in construction, a little engineering would be helpful. Um, and we hope that we can get uh, uh, better service for all of these buildings, maintaining them on a, a better schedule, but also initially it's a real data-driven uh, situation where we need to find out, for instance, uh, with the library again, not to pick on that, but uh, what year was the addition done? What have been the main uh, maintenance issues that have, we've had? What has been worked on? What is the scope of things in the future that we can come up with a five-year capital plan to fix? Is it, is it the heating system that's going to be needing uh, attention? This person is going to have to inventory and make a, a, a spreadsheet for each building. Um, we have a new roof going on 1750 Washington Street where the Parks Department and Youth and Family Services are right now. Um, 
we need to, we need to have uh, a complete data driven uh, schedule of, of what the capital expenses are going to be needed for these buildings. When was the last time the roofs were put on? Um, what's the what's the painting like? What are the bathrooms like? Do they need upgrading? Um, we don't have anyone that does this for us. Um, and you know, as the town has continued to grow, as I say, so has the buildings, um, and we have quite a few. Um, and so this is our top priority for new hires for fiscal year FY20, which would start in July, is to secure this position um, because we see, we see the waste, we see the inefficiencies, um, that costs money. And, and we, we think we can do a lot better. Will this person actually be responsible for doing work like so we find, well, poor, poor uh, Leslie again <laughs> at the library. Um, for years, she'd complained and complained about the plumbing in the downstairs bathroom, and eventually we, we got it taken care of. But she was always the one that had to be checking it, dealing with it, calling the plumber, um, making sure that you know people realized it was not working, blah, blah, blah. Is that what this facilities person would do so that she doesn't have to do it? Or would he actually go in and fix it? No, he would be in charge of recognizing these things, working with the department heads, um, getting to know their buildings well. Um, as you know, the truss, trusses on the library were an issue. He would be inspecting um, from the roof down. Um, to get a handle on what the needs are for each building and then compiling a, a list of an action item, if you will, and also what the capital expense would be working with the finance committee and the selectmen um, so that we can plan on these things more prudently. Um, Leslie is not qualified to be a plumber, uh, <laughs> but she knows it isn't working right. But she's learned a lot about it. Yeah. <laughs> And wouldn't it be nice if we got to a little sooner? And well, so, yeah, there's that. And so, you know, the cost for not doing things soon enough causes a problem. Yeah. Um, one of the issues I have here is our, our insurance carrier strongly recommends um, that this position is assured because um, the, their interest is the risk, um, and, and they want to see the building management be addressed and managed of all of our buildings because we've had a lot of issues with insurance claims. So I think if you have eyes on something and that's what they do, they're not going to be right. doing anything else but looking at these buildings and making schedules. So this person uh, may secure funding to have some painting done. Um, be before the wood rots on the library uh, windows <laughs> right. um, that, right. that we found, right? Right. Um, or so the deck on the, on the uh, golf course. The deck on the golf course, you know. Right. Wouldn't it be nice before yeah. the spindles broke um, yeah. that, that we get that fixed? And, and we get things done in a more timely way. Um, so although um, it's easy to say no mm -hmm. for a new position, we've, oh, we've managed without it. But that's not, that's not a good enough reason not to say yes to something that the town really needs. Um, and and I, I really believe that this, this position would pay for itself. And eventually, um, we, we may be at the point where we may be able to hire one or two people to work with this facilities manager and do simple things mm -hmm. that make sense. But um, the, the, main, the main thrust of it is to take care of the town's assets better. Okay. Um, and we, we real, I think we all know this to be true, that we're really lacking there. Okay. So, Ben, um, obviously the Finance Committee has some other questions or issues that they're concerned about. Could you please help me understand what those are? Sure. Um, you know, first, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mary, for setting this up. Yeah, Appreciate sure. the, uh, the time here. Um, I, there's, there's a few things. First, I, I do want to say... We don't, no one on the Finance Committee disputes the need. No one on the Finance Committee really opposes the position. The problem is, is that as it was presented to the Finance Committee, 
it seemed incomplete. There was uncertainty about whether or not it was going to be a part-time position or a full-time position. There was uncertainty about who the person was going to report to. Um, we'd, um, we weren't sure, are they going to report to Jeff? Are they going to report to Sean? And Sean being the DPW. The, D, the head of the DPW, right. correct, okay. correct. And so as a res, you know, things like that that were kind of throwing a little bit of uncertainty for the finance committee that sort of made people feel a little bit uneasy about putting money into a situation that um, a person may not be as successful if we had a little bit more sorted out. Um, was there a job description? There is a job description. And in, in the job description, it didn't point out who was reporting to whom? It says that they're reporting to the, DP, the head of the DPW, but Sean did not seem um, aware of the job description as Mark is describing it, and he seemed a little um, uncertain. Well, I don't know why mm -hmm. um, that was the case, but it, he, it, it's important that this person has a, a clear charge and understands what they're supposed to, supposed to do um, and who they're talking to about the, this person meaning the, the facilities, facilities person manager, right okay and the other piece of it too there's um, actually two more things for another piece is we, we want to make sure that we understand what is this person is this person going to have people reporting to them right away um, are they going to ha you know are we going to be taking you know say some of the budgets that we have for um, contractors is this person going to be working with contractors immediately or are they going to be hiring an electrician for example or in the case that you described with Leslie and the plumbing at the library are they going to hire a plumber or get the work on that and if so what does that look like um, the schools had some concerns as well okay, about those? that, and you know, they wanted to be at least involved in part of the process so that they could understand where things were going and what, you know, are they going to be on board right away? Are there going to okay, be Okay, let me interrupt and just clarify sure. something. Are schools involved in this? Are, does this facilities person uh, take care of the schools too, or is it just town government? Just town government buildings. Okay. All right, now let me go ahead so I can make so, sure everybody understands. But there understands. were some questions about that because the schools did, weren't as aware of this particular position. And did they, they wanted, want it? I think they do. It okay. sounds like they do. Um, I can't speak for them. Yeah. I would certainly okay. have to ask them specifically, but some of the things that I've heard um, through the grapevine is that they are interested in it. Mm. And, you know, there's, um, as their facilities age, they'd like that as well. And we wanted to sort of understand what does that look like? Is this, what is this person doing on day one? Are they inventorying the, um, the facilities to see what kind of plumbing, what kind of mm -hmm. heating, or are they, you know, are they on the ground, um, you know, uh, underneath a boiler fixing it? Are they managing people? Are, it, there was, it wasn't clear at the, based on the information we've, we had, what was going to happen and when it was going to happen, and people felt a little bit of trepidation about saying yes to something with so much uncertainty. And there are other things and other departments that came to the Finance Committee and said that they needed resources that had things a little more clear and fleshed out that we felt like were given those, those certainties not necessarily certainties, but given those uh, that information, that it would be more more comfortable saying yes to those departments than this. So, competitive demands. Not, nece not necessarily I competitive well, I demands, but, I mean, but it's just like we have a limited amount of amount money, of resources. so we have to we have to decide, and that's the the charge of the finance committee. Okay. We only have a certain amount of money at the end of the day after all of the. Uh, level services there, sure. we only have a certain amount of money right. to to spend on these kinds of initiatives, and there were other initiatives that were yeah, more well, clear. Those are competitive demands. I mean, they right. are not necessarily competition in the sense against each other, but right. they're, they're, they're certainly vying for the same do dollars. Exactly. Yeah. Now, going back, why aren't the schools involved? Well, a year and a half ago, I met with uh, then school committee chair Ann Louise Halstead and R Superintendent Jackson, and they made it clear to me that they were happy with the facilities manager they had for the schools and the staff, and um, they were not interested in, okay. in, in um, being a part of having a town facilities manager. Um, so Involved I, in their buildings. Involved with their buildings. Okay, but, but they wanted to control their own. 
Today, um, Stacy Raffi reconfirmed that with me, um, that they were just concerned that some people wanted to take their facilities over, um, and they wanted to make sure that that wasn't going to be the case. So well, let uh, me just be sure I understand what you're saying, Mark. So the then it, the, the the school committee is indicating that at this moment in time they are not prepared to have this facilities manager person have any role in the schools? That's correct. Okay. And um, so that has been clarified. Um, however, the, the, there's an opportunity for them down the road, should they want it, yeah. uh, there would be a discussion that they would have with who was ever on the board of selectmen at that point. Yeah. Um, if, if, if they decide they did want to partake, um, that they did change their mind, uh, absolutely we would absolutely sit down and talk with them and figure out how that would work, what would the terms would be and so forth, but um, the, what we were told clearly is they're very happy with what they have and they like having control over it because they need, when, when they have an issue with a bathroom um, and they have a lot of bathrooms and if they have an issue with five of them simultaneously they need those people at the schools now they don't want to be calling the DPW the DPW and saying hey we we need some help over here yeah, uh, uh, yeah we'll be there in an hour well that's not going to work out yeah so um, given that information <clears throat> we um, selectmen started to formulate um, a facilities manager uh, director position for the rest of the town um, because we are responsible for all these assets right, and even, yeah. it's important that we have it um, and in the job description it it would come under the DPW um, but also Jeff Ritter um, who well he who supervises comes he, the who, DPW right right, right. Okay. so so this person would be working with uh, Jeff Ritter Sean uh, Reese and, and the um, the um, office for this person, there's a cubicle downstairs next to the oh, building. Oh, where the old water guy goes. Yeah, <laughs> well, where the, the building uh, inspector yeah. office is because they would probably have a lot of conversations with one another. Mm. Um, yeah, the, and, yeah, that makes so, sense. Okay. So our thought wa was that they would be working there, um, which would be right upstairs from, from Jeff's office and Sean is here once a week on Thursday afternoons at 2. He's um, in and out of this building he, he, too. So we thought that would work out well. Does um, this person need a car? Did you guys ask that question? I'm going to bet you did. <laughs> um, it was, but based on everything, it wasn't, we, we're not sure. Oh, okay. We know it, wasn't, it wasn't requested, well, but... Uh, our thinking would. was we have the two new electric cars that this person will be able to use access. One of those okay, so not, not, a, not an additional car? No. Okay. Not, not, certainly not at this time, anyway. Okay. Um, so t other cons that we haven't brought up, other things that, that the committee uh, members might have raised? Um, I mean, it, really, it was those three things. Really, the process, making sure there was a process to onboard the person. Um, the schools um, were expressed some concerns, and they wanted to be at least involved in the conversation. And um, there was an uncertainty about who the person was reporting to exactly, and how that position was going to um, going to shake out. That was part of what was hmm. part part of our, our the, the concerns of the finance committee. It seems uh, it, just from watching the selectmen or attending or whatever, um, it seems to me that Sean's been involved in these discussions right from the beginning. So I have to wonder if there was just a misunderstanding on that particular day. And absolutely, you there, know, there certainly I, could I, have been based on the information. I mean, I, I don't, I, when, can, I can't believe that Sean was thinking that this was a new idea and he wasn't aware of all no, the details. He's been involved since the beginning. You know, but yeah. and 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 that, that certainly can be the case. So it's, in this process now, with these this additional information, does that mean that the finance committee could conceivably, before town meeting, change its its position? Um, I can't speak for the committee. Um, if there's new information, and there certainly seems to be some new information, that possibly there could be a reconsideration. The challenge is, is that um, at the end of the, uh, the bottom the line number the wasn't money. substantial. We'd have to revisit a lot of different things to be able to get to a point that we could 
have the support facilities this. support the facilities manager. I what think is the bottom line? What is the salary proposed salary? Up to, up to eighty five thousand. Okay, uh, and, and how did we get to that number? Um, by basing it on the research of area towns. Okay, others that have it. Yeah. yeah. And does that work within our? Our structure, so that the management positions uh, does it seem to be consistent yes. within the yeah. the uh, system yes. that we have? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and um, it would probably be less than eighty-five, uh, uh, but um, I don't know. In my life, things usually cost more than I think they're <laughs> going to cost, but that's okay. So <laughs> we know. have it up to eighty-five. Okay, <clears throat> okay. And so, but at this, in effect, then what you what you're saying is that even if the additional information came along, there wouldn't be any opportunity, perhaps, at this town meeting to do anything different. What if I didn't I didn't say that? Okay. What I said was is that I don't think that that would be the case. But I mean, you know, okay, I, so I, I can't speak to I don't I can't predict the future. So sure. there might be something that comes along that. Um, completely eliminates all of the uh, objections of the Finance Committee and puts things in, the, in a different light. Well, my question is, and now I'm, I'm wearing the hat as the average Joe Blow voter, sure. okay? If, if the Finance Committee decides that it can't, it's not going to put the money in, right. you've already decided for me that we're not gonna do this position, but I, as a voting member of town meeting, mm -hmm who has the authority, the legal authority, Absolutely. to make that decision, right. you've taken it away from me. Well, don't forget the Finance Committee recommends to town meeting. But that you left the money out of the budget. We left the money out of the budget. So that, but that puts, certainly puts things in a different situation. I certainly, I certainly agree. But hmm. if town meeting wants to revisit and change something, they're within their authority by, to be able to do such a thing. Uh, wait a minute. So now you mean I have to go, and I don't, I, I'm not recommending one way or the other sure. on this position. But it, and, and Finance Committee has tried this in the past. They've basically said, okay, fine, you want to add it back in, that's fine. Now you find the money. That's basically what they say. So they did it to me on town meeting floor one time. <laughs> and so I bumble around with, hey, you know, reserve fund, uh, stabilization fund, uh, you know, whatever. I'll well, do a bake sale. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the challenge with some of those kinds of funds is that um, there's uh, requirements. There's we, we have to do certain things mm -hmm. within the requirements to, to meet those. And as the budget grows, the stabilization has to grow, and we need to have a reserve right. fund of a certain amount. And, you know, I, I think the Finance Committee's role is to make that recommendation we're elected by members of the town to do such a thing and that's so that you don't have to worry about all those things per se and if this is more important to you then by all means I think it is important to stand up in town meeting and say something I've been through two town meetings in a row where there wasn't a single objection to anything in any of the budgets and I'm not saying that this is going to be an exception or different it's just I think a lot of people do see that that is that it's complicated. I mean, I've done this now. I've been, this is my second budget cycle, and it's a complicated process, and there's a lot of moving parts, and we're trying to balance everything, and we want to, and if in a perfect world, we give everything to everybody, but we can't. Right. And, you know, I mean, it, I mean, honestly, I do think the Finance Committee does want this position. It is important. It is something that should happen. It's just that right now, there needs to be a few more things in place for that, for the finance committee to be comfortable with it. Wow, that I don't know. I'm sitting here thinking, again, if I were to if I were to go onto town meeting floor and say, hey, I want to put this back in. You say that there isn't enough money, and so there's eighty five, you know, up to eighty five thousand dollars. Don't I have to also come up with the benefits? Have we calculated benefits or what? Another third, another thirty. Half? I think it's about thirty thousand is usually about okay, what we do. So Don't now, quote me on that number. Uh, yeah, other but people can typically, it's somewhere between a third and a half of whatever the salary is. So you know, right. we're talking about somewhere 30, upwards. Thirty, forty thousand dollars. We're talking somewhere north of one hundred and ten, one hundred and twenty thousand. Okay, okay. So now I have to find, as an individual, I'm supposed to find one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in the budget, and obviously. That ain't going to happen because I'm. I mean, how am I going to be able to sit there and go through it and say, okay, unless it was one of the other articles, maybe just take out a truck and throw the truck aside and throw. <coughs> it. I don't know, but it that makes it really, really challenging yeah. for the for the for the town meeting voter. And so, could the fact that we as voters don't have any real impact on that budget contribute to how few people go to town meeting? Well. Um, you actually can have an enormous amount of impact if 
you come to the finance committee meetings when we have these debates. We post the minute, we post what our agenda is going to be and what we're going to be doing every week. And as a voter, it, you know, if you want to get into the nitty gritty, we we welcome people coming in to talk to us. And so that's the only point in time when I can have an effect. It's really no, supposed to. It's not the only time. Okay. It's just that. It's it is a complicated process. Yeah, and, I know. And it's, I mean, I, I I hear what you're saying, and if this is something that's very important to you, I think you know, come to the finance committee meeting tomorrow night and talk to us. And I, but I think what what winds up happening is is that people don't come in to talk to us about these things, so we're left with trying to do our best to sure. to, to put together the inf based on the information we have, and we we welcome people doing coming to us, but. There's so many things. There's many articles. There's many departments. I mean, we went through, I think, about 40 or 50 votes the other day to get through the entire budget, and it's, it's, it's a, it's a lot. Yeah. And, no, and, 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 and you're I, all volunteers, and 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 this isn't. Yeah. My issue isn't really about this particular position as right. much as it is the process, and and whether it really does invite or allow the average voter to have the impact that, and forgive me for doing the history thing, that we used to have at town meeting. Mm -hmm. Because I, I mean, I've lived here a long time, and that's because I'm old. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we used to really walk away feeling as if we had managed to accomplish something. I don't understand, and I know Prop 2 and a half changed that dramatically, right. because now you had a fixed place you had to be within. Right. Prior to that, it was a free-for-all on town meeting floor, and boy, was that fun. I mean, I got to tell you, <laughs> we, got big, we got big numbers, and it was a lot more fun. But still, it does seem as if it sort of shuts off what the average voter can do. <clears throat> and it requires us, I do watch your meetings. Mm -hmm. I used to ha sit at the, you know, and tape your meetings or broadcast your meetings and stuff like that until you got, it went so late. <laughs> <laughs> you, you all go on so late. It's too much, too late for me. But it's really hard to know where or how to jump into the process. And I'm pretty savvy about town government. Mm -hmm. The average person probably doesn't have as much um, history with it as I do. Well, and I think, you know, you raise a very interesting point that um, as somebody who, you know, ran for finance committee and I, I had to learn on the job. You know, I yeah. had to figure out a lot of it by being on the committee. Even sitting in the seats the seat. over here in the audience, it's not the same as being, hey, what do Having you think? The what, do, what, is your, what is your position on this? <clears throat> and you know, I do agree. There's a there's a steep learning curve. There's a lot to understand. And at the end of the day, I think a lot of what we do is we have we're charged with trying to make some of these tough decisions. And Sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes we do the thing that isn't popular, that people might not like, but that's kind of the nature of being in town government and taking a vote, unfortunately. Sometimes we make decisions that some people don't like. And we don't, you know, we'd love, like I said, we'd love to give everything to everybody, but we can't. And right. that's really, at the end of the day, that's why we are elected to the board to be able to make those choices. And we are more than willing to have people come and talk to us and you know we had some people talking to us about the sustainability coordinator um, we've had them come and, and discuss that position with us and and they're not you know on well, I think one of them is on a board but it's not necessarily a board coming to us it's just people it's citizens who care right. and yep. and that's that's wonderful and valuable and if anything I would say I wish more people came to the meetings to talk to us about things because I think we you know, we don't get a chance to hear what, you know, Joe, town meeting voter, or anybody, a lot of people really think. And but you see, town meeting is really where it's all supposed to happen. And I'm, I'm really, I'm just sitting here still, my head is just tumbling with, you know, both frustration. And I want to be able to sit at a meeting, mm -hmm. just as we're sitting here now, sure. and hear what you have to say for the finance committee, and what you have to say for the board of selectmen, and let me figure out whether or not this is a position that I think is worthy now. In order for us to do that, then you have to have a budget that's incomplete. Yes. 
and, and then, I don't and even. Then you have towns like Wellesley and Needham who took days to get through their town meeting. Oh, we used to do that too. And, and is that? I mean, is that really a, an effective use of our time? And what's the point of having a finance committee to make these kinds of choices? If I mean, look, I, yeah, I get what you're, you're saying. Yeah. That you know, pe but at, at the same time, then okay, then maybe the finance then the finance committee doesn't need to be there if town meeting's going to make all the choices. Because then, what do we do? What is our recommendation? Okay, we make a recommendation. If we're making an incomplete budget, we're not doing our job. Our job is to present a budget to town meeting. We have to present a report at town meeting that says this is what we think and this is our recommendation. And absolutely, people can open things up and say, yeah, we don't necessarily agree with that. Wow, this don't. is really dynamite. But anyway, <laughs> only, for, only for a policy geek Sorry like me. Sorry to take me. all the time, so Mark. That's all right. <laughs> so, all right. That's, so, let's go. so where does this all leave you? Well, I'll be going to... Uh, the finance committee meeting tomorrow night. Good. Okay. And I'll absolutely be standing up at town meeting to uh, argue for this, this position. position. Yeah. And does it, without but, a doubt. And 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 what we're hearing is you better go prepared with where it's coming out of for some other line item or whatever. That's about it, right? Absolutely. Okay. Do you think we've left anything out? I mean, I've got, I mean, people asked about the crew, whether there'd be a crew, whether there'd be an office. We've done that. We did the vehicle. We did the um, schools. Salary. We did the salary. Yeah. You know, I think the only question that was on your list was about bureaucracy. Is like, oh, need, yeah. to increase the size of the bureaucracy. Yeah, that this was a, just another, another piece of bureaucracy. And, and boy, I am sympathetic to that to a point. But I think also, also you know, reality. actually, I'm going to say something in favor of the position. Is it is it bureaucratically efficient to have the librarian worrying about her building? And that's not the case. Yeah, no, I, I you, agree. It, a position, some positions are valuable and do offer more um, to the community. And it's not just another redundant. Uh, well, person. the other thing is in the in the days of old, um, people who were in positions like the selectman or the finance committee might have played a bigger role in day-to-day -day operations. Sure. And that's just not realistic today. People are, are struggling to maintain the jobs that they have right. and maybe holding two jobs and their families and so forth. It's just not realistic today. Times have changed. Absolutely. And I think this is also part of the growing pains of, of Holliston. It is, right? it is. The town has gotten larger slowly. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but luckily we've been able to maintain our community charm. That's right. Uh, that's right. Um, We're still a desirable place to I, live. I can't tell you how many new people I meet in my line of work, and I always ask them, you know, why did you choose to move to Holliston? And the number one reason is always, well, we, when we drove through the center of your town, we could tell that there was a lot of community spirit. And then they start to talk about they checked into the schools, and we do yeah. well there, too. Um, but the number one reason is, is always... We could tell there's a great community spirit in your town just by driving through the center of your town. So I really think that that speaks volumes For us. about our town and uh, the fact that we have so many volunteers and we've gotten awards f because of our volunteer efforts and, yep. and community mm -hmm. uh, spirit that we have in this town. Um, so debates like this are great and, and I can't thank you enough. Thank you very uh, much. I'm going to I'm going to also want to point out um, to the public that this is just one article. There are you know 37, maybe <laughs> 38. I don't know, however many. But there is a sustainability coordinator that will be another conversation about someone that can you know generate uh, grants and and uh, look at how our energy is used and so forth to to make us more sustainable. Um, there are all kinds of different things that are in that warrant that are really, really important about the long-range uh, view for Holliston. So if you are willing, and I hope you are, you can go to the town's website, and it is the warrant is right on the front page. All you have to do is click where it says to click. And yeah, they can be a little boring to read. And oh my gosh, I know town meeting can be boring to go to. I have done that. I have taken knitting, I have taken yeah. crossword puzzles, yeah. I do just about anything <clears throat> I have to. Yeah, it is, but you know, as I'm trying to point out here, that's where our town business happens. It happens twice a year. That's really not such a big deal when you stop to think about it. It's important to participate. It's, it's important to absolutely. be part of the process and absolutely. participate in it. And we're very lucky in this town and in this country to have as many opportunities to actually affect 
the community in which you live, and there aren't many places that have that. And you have so much more influence here in Holliston than you do at a national level. That's I mean, sure. let's face it, you yeah. can make a real difference at home. And yeah, even you know? some of the other towns, uh, town meeting or elected officials, they're right. not even the, yeah. the yeah, general not. public. No, yeah. I agree. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, thank you very, very much. Thank I you. appreciate you coming. Yeah. And uh, thank you. I'm glad uh, we were able to put this together, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you.